Hello, my dear students. Welcome to English 810, the vocational education. We're going to have a very important lesson, which is the adjective closes in Unit 6, Lesson 2. By the end of this lesson, we're going to achieve two main objectives. The first one is to identify relative pronouns and adjective closes, and we're going to use adjective closes in a description. So let's see, my dear students, what are relative pronouns? The relative pronouns are three main things that I'm so sure you use them every day while speaking or writing. Look at the blue box with me. That, which, and who. Each one of these relative pronouns means something or determines something. Let's see, starting with that. That is used to define things. When I want to talk about things as an object, we use that. This is an example. My watch that is on the table is a gift from my father. That here refers to my watch. It gives extra description and explanation for the watch. Second one is which. Which also is used to define things, but it's rarely sometimes used to define people, but mainly it's used to define things. Let's see an example to clarify it. That shop, which is at the corner, sells cakes and cookies. Here, I am talking about the shop. I want to tell the people what is the purpose of this shop, so I am determining that shop using which. Last but not least, who. And of course, who is used to define people. Let's see this example. The boy who took the pen is my brother. Now, I want to tell the readers that my brother is the one who took the pen, so I have to define my brother using this relative pronoun, which is who. Now, let's see what are adjective clauses. Adjective clauses is the main concept of our lesson. I'll ask you to pay attention, my dear students, to the adjective clauses and the usage of them. An adjective clause is a clause that describes a noun. What's the meaning of describes a noun? Let's see the example. My bike that has a broken seat is in the garage. Now, let's imagine that I am explaining or describing my bike without using the adjective clause that. My bike has a broken seat, it's in the garage. I didn't clarify anything and I haven't used any adjective clause, but let's imagine that I am using here this adjective clause, which is that. In this case, I am describing the object, which is my bike, the noun. I'm giving it a very clear description. So here I'm defining that my bike that has a broken seat is in the garage. I'm giving extra explanation and description. Now, before I go further in the explaining, let me just ask you a very quick question. Do you know what is the difference between subject and object? Both of them are very important. We should know the differences between subject and object. Let's see, I'll clarify that in examples. I go school with my sister. Pay attention to the word highlighted in red. I, who is I? I, it's me. I am doing the thing. I am taking the action. So I am the subject. Now, object. I go school with my sister. Now my question is not about the subject. I don't want to know who is the subject. I want to know what is being happened what is happening here is that I go to the school. The school is where I go. So here is the object. Let's see together. I is the subject. 
School is the object. Now, this is the difference between subject and object. Subject is the majority of the subjects are persons or someone who could do an action, while object is the thing being happened. Why am I explaining this? What is the purpose of knowing the subject and the object? You will know now. Let's go back again to the adjective clauses and let's start with the pronouns used as a subject. One, two and three. Pay attention. Number one, the lady who lives next door visited me last night. Look at this, my dear students, here. When I say the lady who lives, it means that I am obviously talking about the lady. So, the lady is the subject. Why is she the subject? Because she is the one doing the action or she is the one being talked about. For example, here I'm saying who lives next door visited me last night. Who lives? So, I'm talking about someone who lives next to me or to uh, next to anyone else. So, the lady is the subject. Who refers to the lady? Pronoun used as subject. Who is the pronoun? It's, it's referring to the lady, which is the subject. Let's move to the second example. The company that makes this coffee is small. Pay attention. Here is the pronoun, which is that and it refers to the company. Again, the company is the subject. In this case here, I'm talking about the company as a subject that I'm defining, I'm, I'm determining the company. So again, the pronoun used as subject. Let's go to the last, pa uh, the last example, I'm sorry. The cafe which is on 77th Street provides the best coffee. Now, we're talking about the cafe, so the cafe is the subject, which is referring to the cafe being the subject. And here, I use these pronouns as subjects. Is there another use of them? Let's see. Pronouns used as objects. As I have previously explained, there is difference between the subject and the object. The subject is the doer, me, I or whoever is doing the thing, whoever is taking the action. But the subject, uh, sorry, the object is the thing which is being happened or the place which is being visited. So let's see. I would like you to pay attention to the first example specifically. Why? Because here I'm talking about this pronoun which is whom. It's not only who, it's whom. It has M at the end, whom. When do I use who? When do I use whom? I use whom if the thing that I want to specify or to define or let's say to determine is the object, not the subject. Let's see the first example. The woman whom I spoke to was the receptionist. Let's see. We will analyze this example. Who is the subject here? I. What is the verb? Spoke. You spoke to who? I spoke to the woman, which means the woman is an object. In this case, I don't use who, I use whom. So, if the thing that I'm speaking or determining is the object, I use whom, not who. Let's go to the second example. The presentation that we saw was about social media. Let's see. Who is the subject here? We. Where is the verb? So. Where is the object? We saw what? The presentation. So here, that is referring to the presentation, which is the object. Last but not least, again, it will be the same thing because that in which both determine objects in this case, or let's say that in which determine things. So, which is used here. Let's see the example. I liked the idea which he raised. I is the subject. Liked is the verb. You liked what? 
we like the idea which. So now which here refers to the idea. So there are two groups. Pay attention once again. There are pronouns used as subject and there are pronouns used as object. In the case of that and which, it doesn't make a difference. But in the case of determining people, I use who, when, the pronoun used as subject and I use whom with an M at the end when the pronoun used as object. Let me just clear everything. Let me just take example one and example one here and here to clarify it once again. The lady who, the lady here is the subject. So I'm using who here. The woman whom I spoke to, the woman is an object. So I have used whom. As simple as that. You just sh you should just know which one is the object, which one is the subject, and then you can define whether it's proper to use who or whom. Now let's move to an exercise to clarify what is being taken. Let's see. You will have some sentences. I'll ask you kindly to complete the sentences using whom, that, or which. More than one answer may be possible. This is the first one. It's done for you. Many companies try to create website that or which will attract customers. Why did I use that or which here? Because I am defining something and when I define things, it's better to use that or which, not who. Let's do the second one. I'm not going to do it. I'll give you two minutes. Try my dear students to do it by yourself and then we are going to discuss the answers together. Number two, people blank visit websites can sometimes participate in contests. Three, contestants can win prizes blank include money or free gifts. Four, Mark took part in a contest blank he entered on a website five the free trip blank he won and the contest was a lot of fun six he met some people on the trip blank he liked a lot now let me give you two minutes try to answer using one of the um, which or whom or that and then we will discuss the answers together Now let's see the answers, my dear students, together. I hope you got them right. The first one, of course, we have discussed. Let's move to number two. People who visit 
websites can sometimes participate in contests. Now you may ask yourself why the answer is who, not whom. Pay attention with me. People who visit. Now, who is the subject here? The people. Subject, so I use who. If it was an object, in this case, I'd use whom. Let's go further and check the answers together. Number three. Contestants can win prizes that or which. It could be either that or which because both clarify uh, things. Include money or free gifts. Number four. Mark took part in a contest that or which he entered on a website. Now, it's either that or which. Why? Because I am defining the contest, which is something. So it's either that or which. It's, it's not who, not e even whom. Number five. The free trip that or which he won in the contest was a lot of fun. fun. Again, I'm referring to the trip. So it's either that or which. Last but not least, number six. He met some people on the trip whom he liked a lot. Again, let me just give you a very small or simple clarification. Why did I use whom, not who? Because here, he met some people on the trip he liked a lot. Where's the subject? He. Where's the verb? Liked. He liked who? He liked the people. So the people here is object. That's why I have used whom, not who. Let me go with exercise two. I want you to complete the conversation with that, which, who, or whom, with the words from the books. So basically, what you will do is, you will choose one of these um, highlighted in red, either that, which, who, or whom, and then you will combine it to one of the expressions, which is at the blue box, in order to continue or to finish the conversation, which is at the examples coming. Let's see. The first one is done for you. It's Gina. I really like that contest idea. Blank at the meeting. Pay attention to the answer. We have used that and then I have combined it with a word or an expression from, from the blue box. So, that you suggested or which you suggested. It's up to you. You could use either that or which. And then you combine it with the first expression from the blue box so it comes this way you have the rest i'll give you two minutes and i'm sure that you will do very well in this start now let's check the answers together i'm not going to discuss the first one as i have already discussed it Let's go to the second conversation, which is Ben. Thanks. I hope the managers, whom are discussing the idea right now, agree with you. Why did I choose whom again? Pay attention, my dears. The subject here is I. The verb is hop. The manager's object. That's why I've used whom. When it's an object, I use whom, not who. Let's go further. Gina, I think the prizes which or that contestants can win sound really cool, especially the new car. Why did I use which or even that? Because it's referred back to the prizes, which is something. And we define things using either which or that. Ben. The prize, that or which, because again, I'm defining the prize, so I'm using either that or which. I liked, and I took it from the blue box above. Um, I like the best is the trip to Italy. Last but not least, my wife and I like Italian food, and Italy is a country that or which, again, because I am defining the country, or I'm defining Italy. At the end of the day, I'm defining something, so I have to use either that or which. We've always wanted to visit. I took it from the blue box. Finally, Gina, me too. People who live in Italy really know 
how to cook, don't they? Why did I choose who here? Because it's referred to the subject, which is people. It's not whom, it's who. Now, before I finish the lesson, let me just show you a very brief summary of all of what we have already explained. Pay attention. Number one, which and that are used to determine things. And I have said this many times while explaining the exercise and the expressions that we spoke about. Which can determine people also. In very rare and simple cases, yes, we use which to determine persons or people. Number three, who and whom are used to determine people. Both of them determine people, yes, but who is used for people as in subject position or the doer, the one who's taking the action, and whom is used for people as an object position, the thing which is being happened or being visited or what matters that it's not the subject. We come to the end of our very fruitful lesson. I hope you enjoyed and it added something new to your grammar value. We will meet very soon again. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Goodbye.